Bob emailed me and asked me to take a look at a few sites that he's done. Uh, we have first here Centenary UMC, fairly large church, and then the smaller Roberts Chapel UMC. So we'll take a look at both of those sites real quick, uh, see what's good and what's bad and what can be fixed and all that kind of stuff. Um, real quick, both sites I noticed two things offhand that we can look at. Uh, it's things that are quite common that I, I have minor issues with. Uh, the first one's really quite minor but worth fixing is the canonicalization. Um, if we put in the W's here it loads. If we put it without the W's it loads but it should load and force one or the other. For example if I type in google.com it poof forces the W's in there. If I were to type in micmail.com you know poof it'll force the W's in there. Always and you can do it the opposite. If you insist on never having W's that's fine but if someone types in the W's you know then take them out. But always have it resolved the same way if possible. And I'll link to that in the blog post for more information on how that's done. And the other thing is the page titles. This is a decent one, Roberts Chapel United Methodist Church. Um, as you go through Roberts Chapel schedule, it's not bad, but you never have the city state in there, which I think is quite important, you know, because people are often going to do their searches for churches um, with some kind of city criteria in there. Probably say Nichols, Nicholsville Church, Nicholsville UMC, trying to find a church in Nicholsville or you know surrounding areas, and you don't have that hardly anywhere on the site. So. In both cases, that's kind of an issue. But let's go, let's dig into Centenary first here and look at a few other things. Um, this, this thing's kind of cool, and actually here's a good example of some good, happy people. But most of the pictures in here are not what I would consider faces. I like lots of good face shots on the front. That one's not bad. Here's a bunch of backs of their heads. You see a picture of the building, a picture of the steeple. You know, I, I would do a little more faces in there, especially since your other images on here don't really have any. I would kind of focus on that one a little bit. That's a good shot there, but yeah, work on that just a little bit. Um, the opening paragraph, I always like to have links built in here. Um, you know, is worship for worship. Okay, let me click and read about worship, read about study, you know, read about these different things. I want to just click right to them. Because again, it's my first time at the site. It's about where my eyes are probably going to fall. So lead me through it. Uh, pastor's welcome is okay. I don't think most people care about those too much, but there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you like a little greeting. Uh, video welcome is kind of nice too, but more importantly, people usually want info about when and where and that kind of stuff. And you do have the services listed here. Again, I'd like to click on the services. It looks like you have a link to the page form, which is better than most. Um, and actually, since they're all on one page, that's okay. But I still might link those just because I say, what's blended? I can't go and read about it there. Um, again, I can at the top link, but again, keep it simple for people. You have a newcomers page, but <laughs> I don't see it anywhere here. I actually stumbled upon it under About Us. After the mission statement is a newcomers page. Certainly want to make that a little more prominent. Um, and again, I would put more links in here. And you talk about, they can come to these classes, but there's not a single link anywhere in here. You know, I want more info on, if you want to go to worship, here's a little about our worship services and click for info. And here's where we're located. And here's what you can do with your kids and our nursery. And just, you know, brand new. This is almost like people that have attended a few times but are looking to dig in a bit more. I'd want a page for someone that's found your site on the web. And then, you know, you're trying to get them to come to a service and try it out. Um, I noticed this a few times. You mentioned or by email and say click on the icon below for email. You know, it's way down here is this little cheesy email icon. I wouldn't do that. I mean, you can have the icon if you want, but it, contacting me by email, that should be clickable right there. Or, worst case, have the actual address written out in parentheses that is, also, that is clickable. That's that way I can copy, copy the link email and put it in my other email program or you know, just click on the word email, something like that. But never ever say click elsewhere for such and such a link. Just give them the link. You know, if you happen to have that link in another place as well, that's great. But it's it's always bad usability to tell people to go elsewhere to click on something when you can just give them a link right there. Um, the nav items, I think, they, they seem a bit wordy to me. Uh, I would try to keep them a little simpler. I mean, they're, they're good, rooted in the word, renewed, reaching, you know, your little R thing. Um, I would kind of, that, that's, that's not an easy fix. I mean, technically, it's an easy fix, but usability wise you probably want to think about that and probably try to shorten those maybe just make it worship for this you know all about the worship services missions you know just simplify those bits a lot a lot of stuff to read up there and so the spacing gets a bit weird you know about us down another line I would I would try to work on that a little bit clean it up I and mean, you've got a lot going on so every little bit you can clean up the better um, same with the sidebar here you've got a lot of stuff you know like the fall fest which actually ended already you can get rid of that um, upper room doesn't need to be featured on every single page of the site. Ministry links don't. You know, some of this stuff maybe could stay, but again, try to trim some of that that out of there. Um, 
you have your cross and flame thing, which I know you need to put on the site, you know, because you're using the cross and flame. But it's again, it's there. It's you know, a purple outline on every single page. I would kind of tuck that more in the footer, just so people are aware of it, um, but not focused so heavily on every page. Going through the site a little bit about us uh, staff. I love that each one has their own page. I always recommend that for folks. You can link link right to like Richard's page if you're on the student page. Saying con con contact Richard for information. You can link right to his page. Then get info. You got his email, phone. Again, I would probably just put his email address rather than the icon. But you're doing pretty well here, so I don't want to complain. Uh, the one other minor thing I would say is let me click on their name. Let me click on Richard to go to his page. Don't make me click on the icon on the side. Um, again, you can leave the icon if you wanted, but do both. This helps, obviously, for usability. I want to just click on it, but it'll help you a bit for uh, search engine optimization, too. You know, think he'll come up higher. People search for Richard Greer. You know, your church will come up higher, and they'll see his page. And really, it's a good thing for him, sort of good personal branding, because that landing page talks all about him and has his picture, and it's the kind of thing most people would want to come up pretty high in a search result for their name. And that's just a little thing that will help a bit more with that. Uh, about us, find us good page but always include the full street address here so many people now if they're going somewhere new will just throw it in their GPS so just give me the address I mean the address isn't on here anywhere the only place it is is down in the footer and that's buried in an image I still can't you know select the text and you know I would drop it in my Google bookmarks to sync to my GPS some people would you know write it on a paper some might just copy and paste it in notepad I mean make it so I can grab that and print it out my wife might grab the address and email it to me Again, I can't do any of those things because it's buried in the image and not listed elsewhere on the page. Um, map's good. Kind of an old school map. Maybe change it to a Google map or something a little more recent, but not really going to complain too much there. And, you know, it's, if people know the area, it's a solid little map. Under, let's see, Rooted and Sunday School. Uh, notice beginning May 10th, 2009. Ooh, that's a long time ago. And then you talk about you hope to update this in the next few days. So you're like 600 days late on that. So. So going forward here, um, one thing I do like that you've done is have links with the rooms so people know what they are. If I can say, what on earth is room 145, I can click it. They all take me to the same page, and it's not great, but it's better than 99% of churches that I can see. Okay, there's Chapel Sanctuary, and then find room 145 is there. At least have some idea of what I'm doing instead of just a blind 145 is somewhere, and really having no idea what's going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. Under Rooted and Wednesday Nights. You mentioned that uh, begin on September 1st. You know, we'll begin on September 1st, so that's outdated at this point. We'll need to get that stuff updated. Let's see, on the news page, the actual news page, this has got a lot of stuff on it. I mean, if you're trying, if you have this much info, one, you should probably try to break it to a few pages perhaps, although it is good that you have the more links, so it's not all on one page. I would probably lose the clip art. I don't think that's adding a whole lot. It's just adding more places for your eye to jump around and making things scattered a bit. But really, all this content would be best in a blog. It would help clean it up. It would make it so I could subscribe to it in my Google Reader or people in their My Yahoo or whatever they use to subscribe to sites. You could take that feed, have it automatically push out to a Twitter account or a Facebook page. I and mean, there's a lot of advantages to having a blog with that. Google likes blogs quite well in terms of indexing content. So that'd be something to consider, but in the meantime, I would try to clean it up a little bit. See what you can do there. Um, I did like the calendar. And it's just a list of stuff, but again, you do something that most churches fail to do, and that's linked to it. You know, if I say, you know, Fall Fest, what is that? I can click on it. Hey, and there's information about Fall Fest. So many churches have lists of events like this, but no links to anything, so I, you don't know what's going on. You know, women's Bible study, you're kind of lost. Well, not in this case. I can click through and, and read about it and see when it is and what it is and how to register and so that's a very nice job on that that calendar to get that stuff done um, and that's really about it for the site um, the last note I had I already covered was to, to make this plain text at the bottom it's a nice looking graphic I like your little logo you've, you've used throughout the site but make that plain text down there for the benefit of Google and for your users and really for loading the page a smidge faster with one less image it's always good heading over to Roberts Chapel uh, it's a much smaller site much smaller congregation uh, similar kind of things though you've got the word Nicholsville that's just not anywhere in the text other than like on the one of these find us page I think says the word Nicholsville everywhere else is buried in an image here you do have the actual address on the page so I can copy that throw it in my GPS be in a little better shape back on the home page for a sec though um, you talk about you know we have people from all walks of life you know all these different things you have and I can't click for details on anything and in fact, that's kind of the biggest problem I have with this site 
is that I realize it's a much smaller church, but it doesn't appear that they do anything. Um, your calendar, you know, talks about you have Sundays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, but that's it. I don't see any other gatherings or retreats or events or nothing. It just it seems like it's just those few things and that's all. So um, really, the content on the pages is pretty solid. You know, here I think is a perfectly acceptable place for a picture of the church building. You know, talking about the church. You know, we should have that. And you talk about the pastor, and you know, it's really pretty solid for a small church like that. But it just doesn't seem like the church is doing anything. And so I would look to update that. So, so there's your look at Roberts Chapel and Centenary. I uh, hope that's helpful. Thanks.